Approximately 7 million pets live in 3,500 shelters nationwide every year. These animals are neglected, found as strays, face abuse, high kill centers, and euthanization. <coughs> I'm Kathy Charbonneau. I'm married to Randy. He is in the Army National Guard. I have a daughter that's going on 21 and a son going on 18. I have two cats and a dog. In 2005, my husband got orders to go overseas to Afghanistan. Um, at the time, my daughter was 10, my son was 7, and we knew that was going to be tough news to give them. When we discussed how we were going to tell the kids about the deployment, we thought it would be best probably to get a dog to help them focus on something good. So I remember the day we sat down after school on our bed. We had the two kids, and my husband was telling them he was going to be gone. And they were very sad, and um, so we said, well, the good news is we're getting a dog. And even though they were very upset that their dad was going to be gone, the idea of getting a dog really helped. So we looked in the paper, we looked um, at the Humane Society. Homeward Bound is Addison County's Humane Society to help homeless pets find new homes. Either as stray animals that are picked up by animal control officers or they're surrendered by people who can no longer keep them. Maybe they're moving, maybe they've had a change in their lifestyle, maybe there's financial difficulties. Um, any number of reasons why they might say that they need to find a better home for the pet than they can currently provide. Any animal that comes in is welcome to come into our shelter um, and what we'll do first is make sure the animal is, is physically healthy and give it any treatments that it needs. We work with local and area veterinarians um, and we also make sure that everybody is spayed and neutered before they're adopted into a new home because that obviously helps to, to break the cycle of, of homelessness for pets. Um, after animals are ready for adoption, they go up on the adoption floor and then our staff work with people coming in who are looking for a new family member to try to find a match that is lasting and will suit both the pet and the person. We have families that come in wanting to adopt with children. We have retired people wanting to adopt who now have the time for a pet. Um, we have working single people who adopt who want someone to welcome them home at the end of the day. Um, so in that sense, everybody becomes a member of the family, a member of the household. It was hard because not everybody understood uh, about deployment. So friends didn't know how to treat my kids. And they, you know, what we expected is they would have included them more in things, but they didn't. They treated them like nothing was different in their life. And I think having Maggie helped that because Maggie was their friend and companion and they played with her and, and their mind was off other things because she was there. They even dressed her up. She had a number of costumes that <laughs> they dressed her up in and took pictures and they wrote to the Addison Independent and put her in there as their pet of the week and it was really cute and I liked doing that. It was I think 17 months the first time um, and then there was another time he got deployed. It was about four years later. Got called up, go back to Afghanistan. And at that time, um, you know, the kids were older, we were dealing with teenager issues. And so that time we decided to get them each a cat. We had Maggie and we figured, well, we'll get them a cat. So we decided to go to the Humane Society. They had a lot of kittens there and let them each pick out their own kitten. typically help between seven and eight hundred animals a year. Majority of those animals are cats that come um, looking for new homes. But Maggie had to adjust to two kittens. Um, the kittens had to adjust to each other because they were in cages at the Humane Society. The sad part was after a year, my husband was still deployed, and um, Alyssa's cat, I let it out in the morning and it didn't come back right away. 
all of a sudden I heard screaming or a noise and I didn't know what it was so I came to the house and the kids were screaming in the house and I came in and they said the cat's dead on the side of the road so I went down and it was Alyssa's cat and I had to pick it up bring it back and bury it which was hard when he went overseas there was a lot of danger I tried to keep the newspapers out of sight but there was a, a person that got killed in his group um, so everybody was thinking, my dad may not come home. And I was thinking that my husband may not come home. So death was on the mind. And then when her cat died, I think, you know, her mind could have gone places. Went right back to the Humane Society and picked another one up. People really realize when your husband's deployed I mean in our situation he's my best friend so with him being gone I've essentially not only lost a husband but my best friend and it gets quite lonely um, most people work during the day I didn't and um, you know I had to take care of the kids and I had to be mom and dad take care of the house and like I said everything was going wrong and so somebody could get really depressed with all that. And Maggie, she actually helped me. I mean, there was a reason to get up. I had to get up, feed her, let her out. The animals give so much back to people um, and they don't ask for much. And it seems like the least that we can do to help those animals who have fallen on hard luck by becoming stray or in need of a helping hand to a second home. To find out what you can do to help these animals, reach out to your local Humane Society by visiting humanesociety.org. To find out what you can do to help military families going through a transition while a loved one is deployed, visit supportourtroops.org.